The white-tailed sabrewing is the largest hummingbird in Tobago and is yet another environmentally sensitive species, designated by the EMA in 2005. It is about 12 centimeters long and weighs about 10 grams or the same as about 10 paperclips. It is generally bright green with a dark blue throat and white streak that is said to resemble a moustache. Well, the sable wing have a distinctive feature and that's the reason why they're called sable wing first of all. And the primary feather P10 and P9 tend to be really broad, flat and they're bent at an angle and it gives you somewhat of a sable uh, shape and hence they're referred to as the sable wings. Three outer feathers on the tail are, really, are white, so there are a few other sable wings that also has that feature, but the only sable that we find here has that particular characteristic. The sable wings' scientific name is Campylopterus encipinus, which are Greek and Latin words that both mean bent wing. The scientific name is also the root of its nickname in Tobago, which is Campy. We're still hypothesizing as to what exactly is the function of the broadness of the, of the saber. Uh, one of the reasons we're thinking it could be used as a, a sex selection. So the males with the broader saber seem to be more attractive to the females and so they would tend to get the, the girls as opposed to the ones that have a narrower saber. They have a really high pitched, sharp, three kind of sound. The white-tailed sable wings are sexually dimorphic, meaning it's very easy to distinguish between the male and the female, visibly. Um, the males tend to be really brightly iridescent color, green on the upper back and in the lower belly, and has a bright blue throat and a white dot above the eye. Whereas the female, she has a white line, it's called a white mustachial stripe and underneath her eyes, and her belly isn't as solid green, it's uh, speckled with grayish white. There are only two places in the world that the white-tailed sable-wing hummingbird can be found, on the Paria Peninsula in Venezuela and Tobago. These birds are found in the northeastern part of Tobago, especially in the forested area. You have Coffee River Nature Retreat, you also have a Gilpin Trail, and you also have on the northeastern part with Louis and so on, you will see this bird only in the forest, not out in the um, grassland area. Hurricane Flora in 1963 reduced the forest cover to about, uh, by about 30 meters. It was a huge loss to the main ridge. Only the areas surrounding Bloody Bay on the far side of the rainforest did not have this impact. And it has taken about 30 years for the forest cover to come up to the um, level of what it was in 1963. However, it was rediscovered by Richard French in 1974 and has since been recorded under the red list of threatened species by the International Union for the Conservation of Nature. It is important to note, however, that documented studies on the sable wing population before Hurricane Flora are not available. It is therefore difficult to assess how much the hurricane affected the population. The bird is thought to be flexible in where it selects its habitat, as they have been found in relatively mature montane forest above 280 meters, as well as in open areas such as clearings, abandoned plantations, and in regenerating forest less than 15 meters tall. The sable wing feeds on mainly nectar from undergrowth flowers. Male birds perch conspicuously and defend their territories aggressively against other hummingbirds. This large species is both fearless and inquisitive. Data collected for an EMA-funded research project, as well as findings from previous research, both indicate that the status of the sable-wing population in Tobago is optimistic. What we know is that the females tend to lay uh, close to waterways, and we've seen them nesting in bamboo, or even a wild cocoa in nests that might be about 8 to 10 meters above the, the water um, in small nests uh, with about two to three eggs for the most. The um, forest reserve was made a forest reserve in 1765 purely for um, the preservation of water and it has remained a reserve since that time. So the birds have been able to recover and proliferate in peace. Currently, the Department of Natural Resources and the Environment 
the forestry division section of that department is the group that is protecting the birds and as far as I can see they're doing an excellent job. Um, the birds are on the return. Uh, we see a lot more sightings now. Um, it seems that the groups of people or tourists going in there for bird watching has been kept a more reasonable amount. 10 or 12 in a group which does allow the bird to show itself occasionally and not start moving its nest in other direction. According to the Environmental Management Act, one can be fined up to $100,000 and face imprisonment for up to two years if one commits an offense as outlined in the EM Act against an ESA or ESS. Within the Main Ridge Forest Reserve, there are few reported cases of illegal logging and minimal habitat loss as a result of human activities. The reserve is also marketed as a unique ecotourism destination. The birds play a very important role in ecotourism because 90% of our guests come here with a lifetime list of that bird, the white-tailed saber wing. Right when we got here, we saw the, the saber wing almost right away, which was uh, really thrilling. It's a super pretty bird. I wasn't quite sure what it was at first. I needed to look in my book. And when I saw that it was the saber wing, and then I got a good look at its iridescent front, it was just so impressive and beautiful. And I love that, um, that the people here are trying to, to conserve this bird. I think that's great. Continued management of the white-tailed saber wing includes continuous monitoring of the birds. The data collected is essential for evaluating the effect of another hurricane on the distribution and population size of the species. Trading of individuals to monitor saber wings is also necessary to build a local capacity. While both the EMA and the DNRE continue their education and awareness programs to conserve this unique species.